James Hetfield had a lot of cool signature guitars over the years, like the Snake Bites, the Vulture, the Iron Crosses. All the cool explorers from the 80s, but I think one of his most unique signature guitars are the Truckster's. The grey and the black one. In this video I'm gonna show you the LTD version of the Truckster, demonstrate a couple of features that you probably didn't realize are there, and explain what this finish and the name are supposed to represent. Get ready for the Truckster. <laughs> The LTD Truckster was first introduced back in 2005 and here is the official catalog from ESP for that year. It says here that if ESP guitars can survive a Metallica tour, they can survive anything, quote James Hetfield. This is the ESP custom shop version, I used to have the 2008 grey ESP and the 2011 black Truckster. There are a lot of differences between the ESP and LTD versions. The tuners, the hardware, the pickups and the electronics are the same on both guitars. But the materials used and the paint job plus the finish are quite different. I'm gonna discuss the paint and the so-called aging in a bit, but for now you should just know that the paint is supposed to be a couple of layers. And that's a big difference. The LTD on the left seems to be painted only once and graphics are applied on top of that. The ESP on the right has multiple layers of paint. More on that in a minute. Back to the catalog, the Truckster is the fifth Hetfield signature to carry his name since he joined ESP in 1991. It was used throughout the Saint Anger tour. Here's what Kirk was up to in the same year, the KH2 Vintage, an amazing guitar. And look at this, another Metallica member and his signature guitar. I've actually never seen this one, never seen Dave use it. And it's an ESP custom shop version. Maybe Megadeth fans have seen him use this one, I haven't, I would love to review this one. On to the next year, 2006 catalog and some new pictures of James using the Truckster in the Saint Anger tour. And this is the last time the LTD version is shown in the catalogs because in 2007 we only see the ESP. As you can see, it's nowhere to be seen. Then for 2008, the same picture used, the ESP version, no LTD. Then for 2009, again we have only the grey ESP version and the introduction of the black iron cross. Here's another catalog for 2009 and it's weird that we see the black iron cross and in the back the grey truckster, probably no pictures of the black iron cross being used live. 2010 marks the 35th anniversary of ESP guitars and the introduction of the black ESP truckster. A lot of people including myself thought that the black and grey truckers were introduced at the same time, but no, in fact the black one came 5 years after the grey. Oh man, check this out, 2010 Will Adler's signature models, I really wanna review these. In the 2010 catalog we have the ESP and LTD versions of the black truckster. Here's another catalog for 2010 and it only features the ESP versions of the black and grey truckers. 2011 marks the introduction of the Snakebite and in this catalog we can see both the ESP and LTD black trucksters. 2012 we have the Snakebite again, the black truckster and the return of the grey truckster, the ESP version of it. And that's pretty much the last of it. I want to talk about the elephant in the room, literally the grey elephant. A lot of people seem to dislike the finish on the trucksters simply because they don't understand it. It is not supposed to represent an aged guitar, it's supposed to look like an aged truck. Get it? Truck? Truckster? Makes sense, huh? Why a truck that has been painted over a couple of times? 
Well, here's the thing that most of you probably already know. For those of you who don't, James Hetfield is a huge car guy. And he is especially crazy about classic cars. He has a huge collection of custom-made classic cars, hot rods and such. And recently he donated a big part of this collection to the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. There's an awesome video about his collection that I'm gonna link for you guys above. So James being a car and a bike guy, he likes to incorporate details from cars and bikes onto his guitars. Here are some examples of details taken from cars and bikes. His JH3 Eclipse from 99 has pinstripes and racing flags on it. Then there's the black Gibson Iron Cross which took some details from cars and bikes, the racing stripe, the cross and inspired the two ESP versions that followed. There are a lot of small details on his other guitars like stickers, like small ornaments. They are all inspired by James's love for cars and bikes. If you look at it this way and not just like an aged guitar, the truckster makes a lot of sense. It is a truck that has been painted a couple of times over and now has just the primer grey on top of it and is battle tested. I personally think that's a unique finish and an idea that I've never seen on another guitar. The big question is does the LTD version hold its own against the ESP? Despite not having so much attention to detail, after all this is an LTD version, a mass produced guitar, not a custom shop ESP, I think LTD did a great job. And here's something else, after trying the black, the grey ESP and LTD guitars, I think the grey LTD is better than the black one. It's made 5 years earlier after all. I think during that period, the early 2000s, LTD made their guitars better, at least the signature series for James Hetfield. And one more thing, I think the aged primer grey finish is more unique compared to the black one. Primer grey makes sense on a truckster. The black one just seems like an afterthought, like we got this truckster, let's make a black version of it. I, it's cool and all, but I prefer the grey. And check it out, no ugly stickers on the headstock. Let me know in the comment section which truckster do you prefer, the black or the grey one. Here are the official specs from the 2005 catalog, I'm gonna leave them on screen so you can pause and check them out. Time to pop the hood on the truckster. Before I do that I've already cleaned up the fingerboard and conditioned it. I've polished the frets using Frine, I've polished the EMG pickups. I've cleaned the top but not with a polish, remember this is satin finish. If I use polish on it, it will become glossy like here where it was in contact with the palm. Remember, never polish a satin finish unless you want to turn it to gloss. We got the Eclipse body shape, mahogany body, a 3 piece mahogany neck with a set neck construction, rosewood fingerboard with the flag inlays LTD on the 12th fret, 22 extra jumbo frets, the Eclipse headstock with the LTD raised logo, the James Hetfield signature and the truckster cover for the truss rod, Spurzel locking tuners, a set of EMG pickups 8160. The controls are slightly modified by James Hetfield. We have a couple of three way switches. The down one is functional. A locking bridge and a tailpiece by Tom Pro. A couple of surprises under the pickups. And have you ever seen a neck pickup cavity routed so deep? Look at the normal depth of the cavity of the bridge pickup. Now check it out on the neck. And I'm curious, is this supposed to be a long neck tenon? It's the same width as the neck. I see some glue around it, so yeah, this probably is a long neck tenon. Something else interesting, even that early in 2005, we still got the quick connect system for the pickups. Another cool thing, this one is the functional three-way switch, this one is a dummy, but it's routed. If you want, you can get the cables all the way through the cavities, through this hole here and down to the electronics and connect it. Here's that neck pickup cavity from another angle, it's pretty cool to see something like that, it's the first time I'm seeing a guitar being routed so deep, especially in Eclipse. A set of EMG pickups, in the neck position we have the EMG 60, it was made in May of 2005 in USA. Same year as the introduction of the truckster, you have this thin pickup ring, looks like metal but it's indeed plastic. The EMG 81 in the bridge position made 10 days later than the neck one in 2005. The pickup ring for the bridge is higher. You can see here on one of the corners the finish has worn off and the plastic shines through it. This was cream I think originally. 
looks like a satin chrome that goes well together with the finish of a car or a truck. Check out the routing for the three-way switch, they did it from the bottom side, barely missing the long neck tenon. Short screws for the neck pickup ring, long for the bridge. Measuring the pickups, the EMG81 in the bridge position measures 17.01 k ohms. Switching over to the EMG16 in the neck, let's wait until it settles down, 16.75. Middle position, 843. This three-way switch doesn't do anything, it's routed from the bottom, you can connect it if you want. This one is the pickup selector. The hardware has this satin chrome finish to it with knurled metal knobs and there's this cool warm pattern around it. Obviously James uses the bridge volume uh, knob, doesn't use the neck too much, no pattern around it. Hasn't been worn. The bridge and tailpiece also have the satin chrome finish to them. They are both locking and locked through this 1.5mm Allen bolt. Here's the logo on the bottom side, Tone Pro by Goto. The struts for the bridge, it's metric, thumbwheel and flathead screwdriver adjustable, remember to unlock the bridge before you adjust or you will eat up the heads of the screws. Same goes for the tailpiece, Tone Pro by Goto satin chrome finish, locks with 1.5mm wrench. The tailpiece weighs 77 grams, it's one of the heaviest that I've seen. The bridge weighs 55 grams, both of these are pretty solid, good choice. I want to discuss the layout, obviously we have the Eclipse 4 knobs configuration, but James is not using the upper 3 way switch, he disconnects it and moves it down here like on his Explorer guitars. To move it down here he has to get rid of the bridge volume pot, he does that by moving the bridge volume in the position of the bridge tone. James is not known for using the tone pots too much anyway. So we got a bridge volume, a neck volume and a master tone here. For the finish, as we already discussed, this is not supposed to be an aged guitar, it's a truck that's painted over a couple of times. It was painted over 4 times to be exact. Originally it was painted black, then white, then red and now it's aged primer grey. I think Gibson tried to do something similar in recent years with their standard painted over series. Here's a cool thing that a lot of people don't realize, the truckster actually has binding. Originally it was white, then it got creamier over time, you can see it here on the fingerboard. I think that's extremely cool and to be able to see it in such a small space here. It's around the entire body of the guitar and it's supposed to be under the paint, after all it's painted over. That's a cool detail. The patterns of the so-called aging are not coincidental. This one is from James's forearm rubbing against the top of the guitar, slowly chipping away the edges of the different paint layers. This one is from Pick Attacks. Hmm, what's this one doing here? James isn't using this three-way switch unless it's a kill switch connected for him. This one is from the heavy downstrokes, there should be way more here. The markings around the three-way switch and the volume tone pots are self-explanatory. This finish is called Aged Primer Grey, meaning that it's satin polyurethane and it gets glossier over time when in contact with the skin or being polished. My friend has played and loved this guitar so he has worn the finish a little more. I've already mentioned a huge difference between the LTD and ESP, I don't think the LTD is painted over a couple of times. The ESP is and as a result this pattern here has some relief to it. On the LTD the entire color is primer grey and they've just applied this graphic on top of the grey. That's normal, it is a mass produced LTD guitar, imagine painting everyone 1, 2, 3, 4 times over. For the ESP version they did that and it's pretty cool. A 3 piece mahogany neck with a set neck construction. Binding around the fingerboard with black side dots. A rosewood fingerboard with some pretty cool dark streaks. 22 extra jumbo frets and I mean extra, these are pretty big. Nice and polished. The flag inlays are pretty interesting. Uh, they are supposed to look like mother of pearl but they are, I don't think they are actual mother of pearl. That's gotta be the shiniest pearloid I've ever seen. LTD chose the plastic so well that it almost looks like mother of pearl. Something that you cannot notice on pictures, the LTD logo is slightly raised from the inlay. The black letters are like inserted into the plastic. Here's a look of those inlays on a natural light, they look pretty nice. On to the headstock which is the eclipse shape, the waving flag, aged primer grey finish, the James Hetfield signature on it and the raised LTD logo which has two pins that go into the headstock. 
Be careful when you're cleaning this one because they break easily. Some bangs and chips on the headstock which is pretty cool. Did you notice this? You know what it means. The headstock has binding as well. It only shows in this factory age spot here. I think that's super cool. If you look closely you can see the edge of the binding from underneath the aged primer grey paint. The nut is fine, obviously it hasn't aged like the binding, the binding was as white as the nut. It gets yellow over time, this guitar is almost 20 years old. Here's a nice and wide cavity for the truss rod, it's two way adjustable by 4mm Allen wrench. Here's the signature truss rod cover, truckster written on it, two ply, white and black, the leathers are silver. The nut is 42mm wide or 1.65 inch. The 12th fret is almost 53mm wide or 2.08 inches. This neck has a volute but if we measure properly near the first fret 20.4mm or 0.80 inch. Thickness of the 12th fret 21.7mm or 0.85 inch. Nice and slim. Thickness of the body 41.1mm or 1.61 inch. 10mm shy from a full thickness body. 55.4 mm between the pickup rings. The fingerboard radius is the usual 305 mm or 12 inches just as James prefers it on his Les Paul custom Gibson guitars for example. And his V's and Explorers. For the neck profile we got this nicely rounded off C shape around the first fret and it's getting flatter around the 12th fret D shape. The back of the truckster is just as interesting as the front. Here's the routing for the three-way switch, remember it's pre-routed to reach the electronics if you want to connect the three-way switch. Here's the 9V battery compartment, in later models I've noticed from 2012 and up they've switched to the new metal battery box. Here's the electronics compartment with the EMG pods which are the old style, soldered on, no quick connect, only the pickups are on a quick connect system, the cables for them go through there. And here's the routing for the output jack. This so-called aging is leaving a lot of people scratching their heads over it. It's supposed to be belt buckle rash and I think only the ESP is done a little better. These scratches go through all the paint layers, here they're pre-scratched and some graphics applied to them. Anyway, we got this idea of a truck painted a couple of times, why do we have belt buckle rash on it? I don't know, but that's how they did it. It's okay, I guess, for what the LTD is. Some more graphics here and this on the ESP is done much better because you got some relief to it. Over here they just removed the single layer of paint and applied some graphics on top of that. So they scraped the grey paint and applied some like red and white marker or something. Original strap button here and some more so-called aging on the edges of the back of the guitar. The belly cutaway here has been scraped a lot and the neck heel as well. Here's something else cool, check out the color of the mahogany for the body, now check it out on the neck. The mahogany for the necks is always slightly darker. Here's the covers for the electronics compartment. The battery box cover still has the protective film on it, shooting on the back side. Here's the cover for the three-way switch, shooting on the back side, satin finish for the front. And the cover for the electronics compartment, shoot it again, and still has the ESP inspection sticker with the signature. I've put a brand new 9V battery in the truckster. My friend didn't have any in the guitar because he was not using it for a long period of time. It's a good idea to remove the 9V battery if you're not gonna use the guitar for years or else it will leak into the electronics. It's always a good idea to write the date on your 9V battery when you replace it to remember exactly when you did it. Remember, EMG pickups drain the battery when the plug is in. So unplug it when not using. The satin finish of the neck completely glossed over time, like you see this is the H primer grade, this is the neck right now from playing, my friend played it a lot so it got glossier. This aging here is supposed to represent James's playing positions, he plays mainly in these first positions, he's a rhythm player after all. I love it that the volute is slightly worn off from him stopping right here in the first position as well. Here's what the back of the headstock looks like. I love a volute on a guitar. I love the guitars with volutes. ESP logo near the volute. Made in Korea in the World Musical Instrument Factory in 2005, June. Remember, the EMG pickups were made in April, a month earlier. The serial number looks like a sticker under the thin layer of polyurethane finish. Also, do you notice anything? That's right, no stupid compliance regulation sticker for this headstock. My favorite Spurzel back locking tuners. This finish, the satin chrome, was not available for purchase back then. I think still isn't available. Maybe they've made it. 
after many years, but this was available only on certain models. Here's one of the sports auto tuners out of the guitar and that's the way they mount to the back of the headstock via this pin here. You probably noticed that it's hollow, so if you press hard down on it, it's gonna make its own routing into the back of the headstock. I'm gonna weigh the entire mechanism, the tuner, the nut and the washer all together weigh 35 grams. Nice and solid. I've just noticed something, the spurt zone nuts are bigger than on most tuners. For most tuners I use the 10mm wrench, the spurt zones use the 715. This one works just fine with them. So basically spurt zone tuners have bigger nuts. <laughs> I'm gonna set the Truckster in E flat standard, the Metallica Live tuning with 1052DR strings. The string changes on a Les Paul type of guitar with locking tailpiece, bridge, and locking tuners is always a pleasure. But remember, don't wrap the string around the tuner head. Just feel it too straight like this, no slack left, rotate at 90 degrees. If you're still wrapping the strings after so many times I've explained, we can't be friends. The LTD Truckster weighs as much as a Flying V or an HG Gibson at 7.16 pounds. It's time to start up the truck. thoughts about the LTD Truckster. I honestly did not expect to like it that much after owning the ESP custom shop version. As I already mentioned I've tried I think a 2011 LTD black Truckster. I didn't like that one. It felt plasticky but this the 2005 the first edition is amazing. 
I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but it almost feels like an ESP standard. Combine that with the fact that it's the cooler finish in my opinion, the aged primer grey and you get yourself a pretty nice James Hetfield signature. If you never owned one and you want it, you're in trouble, because the grey truckster is becoming extremely rare, both the LTD and ESP versions. It's funny because when I used to own the black and grey ESP versions, a lot of people wanted to buy the black one from me. The grey one was not that popular. In my opinion, it's the cooler guitar, it's the original finish, it's the original idea with the primer on top of a truck. And I always thought that these will skyrocket in price at some point. And I think they did because I don't see any grey LTD trucksters listed on Reverb, I only see the ESP version listed for 4000 euro. To give you some perspective, in 2018 I bought the black and the grey one for I think 1500 euro, the ESP version. These days, in 2023, I think the LTD version can easily get you 2000 euro. I don't think my friend will ever sell it.